Fa'ida number 10 from the book Ma'arakatun Nas, Battle Over the Text by Sheikh Fahad Al-Ajlan. He talks about the broken criterion, the broken standard, the standard which is no longer standing. What's he talking about? Well, an individual comes along and he says, I believe in the Quran and in the Sunnah. I accept the Quran and the Sunnah. I respect the Quran and the Sunnah. The Quran and the Sunnah are my foundations. MashaAllah, beautiful. But then this person here, he makes up certain rules, certain principles, which in reality break destroy eclipse weaken the quran and the sunnah the quran and the sunnah become like null and void theoretically he affirms the quran and the sunnah but practically they are no longer established practically they have been weakened practically there's no purpose behind them they cannot function they cannot perform their function of dividing between that which is the truth and that which is batil examples so the person says the rule of uh, principle of according to whose understanding ala faham man ala faham man any issue any masala any matter comes up the person says well according to whose understanding this is according to your understanding according to those scholars understanding according to the orthodox understanding but we are not bound by that understanding so don't push that understanding down our throats everything the person says according to whose understanding according to whose understanding and when you do this when you do this in reality the quran and the sunnah have no function after that why we are not talking about matters where there's a legitimate difference of opinion where the ulama have deferred etc that's understandable no issue there at all there we talk about yes according to whose understanding these scholars those scholars it's a leg legitimate arena of differences no issue but we're talking about matters which are definitive qat'i there's no debate with regards to these matters there shouldn't be any debate with regards to these matters these matters are explicit etc the person comes along and says well according to whose understanding that alcohol yes but according to whose understanding is it prohibited this matter of alcohol there was a certain context there was a certain time this does not mean that it's uh, for all times in all places Jayid, the person then talks about the matters of zina uh, riba and all other matters which technically the ulama have agreed upon but this person comes up with this rule according to whose understanding and thus there's no longer any sami'na wa ata'na. There's no longer hear and obey. Why? According to whose understanding should I hear and should I obey? Jayid. And thus, we no longer know what the Sharia is. We no longer know what Islam is because according to whose understanding and the Quran and the Sunnah, the, the back of the Quran and the Sunnah has basically broken. Allah Musta'an. And the second principle or rule that the person who claims to follow the Quran and the Sunnah makes up, comes up with, but in reality, this rule, this principle, this idea breaks and destroys the Quran and the Sunnah. What is the second one? The second one is equating between the truth and falsehood. Examples. The person says, well, you know, we talk about hijab, etc. And we want to allow the woman to wear the hijab and they have the right, etc. And so just like that, we have to allow women who want to walk around naked and in miniskirts. We have to also allow that. Just like how we want uh, masajid and we allow masajid, etc. We must also allow everyone else, whatever religion it might be. We must allow complete practice of those types of religions, no matter how bizarre they might be no matter how strange they might be but we have to and we must allow the person says that uh, we're not allowed to kill the murtad no longer should we apply the rules of apostasy why because the disbelievers in their land if somebody becomes a muslim then they might apply the similar rule on that person there and they might execute that person so in our lands we must not apply the rule of apostasy they say that uh, we should not be helping muslim minorities that are suffering anywhere why because the disbelievers will then assist the non-muslim minorities in our lands and strengthen them etc and this might cause this might cause problems we must allow the spread of kufr in our lands why because if we don't then maybe the non-muslims in their lands they will prevent the spread of islam 
So these are some of the ideas that this person puts forward. We say to this dear brother or dear, this dear sister that, uh, number one, you have equated between the truth and batil. Because uh, we want this truth, so we must allow such and such type of batil. This is a mushkila. Number two, your starting point should have been, what is the haq? What is the truth? But your starting point seems to be what? Well, let us see what the others would do. Let us see what kufr would do. And based upon that, we take a stance. That's not the right place to start, Jayid. Also, remember that the other, they should not be basing the starting point on what you do. Rather, you should hold them to account based upon their own values and their own system, Jayid. Just like you should be truthful to your values and your system and your beliefs, we call them to also be truthful to their beliefs and their values. The one who is uh, <coughs> calling for secularism and liberalism, etc., and nothing to do with religion, then we call you to abide by those rules and regulations and those values. And so you allow X, Y, and Z. We hold ourselves to a different standard. And thus we will not allow X, Y, and Z. So these are two ideas that some people have. And these two ideas in reality nullify, break down, weaken, eclipse the Qur'an and the Sunnah. What are these two perils? Number one, according to whose understanding? And number two, equating between the truth and falsehood. Hayyakumullah.